about the foods that we eat, as I asked you about that a little bit er earlier. But um, it came to mind to me things that a lot of us eat. And I just want to know, I want to kind of pick your brain a little bit to okay, tell me sure. what's wrong with these and what's right with these. So I'll just give you some four examples. Okay. Okay, let's say, um, the, well, a typical American breakfast, I guess, for a lot of people is um, bacon and eggs and, uh, or sausage and eggs or pancakes and syrup and usually with white flour and, uh, or else jam, blah, blah. What's wrong with that? You're again talking about a starch and fat centered diet. Just because you're frying ba bread and calling it a pancake doesn't stop it from being bread. Just because you put some cheese and some ketchup on some bread and call it pizza doesn't stop it from being bread. You're still in a starch and fat centered diet and that is the big problem here. What is happening is the, the, they take this whole wheat and send it to a factory and the factory eats the whole wheat. It grinds it up, takes out the fiber, the vitamins and the minerals and the moisture and the end product of it processing or metabolizing the whole wheat is bleached white flour. So what we're looking at is a waste byproduct of a factory that we're eating, and we call it bleached white flour, white rice. The factory is already eating the food. Mm -hmm. There's no nutrients in it. There's no fiber in it. So, so it's been stripped of everything that your body needed before you even get right. a chance to and eat it. Right, and the main thing is we have isolated and concentrated the starch of the wheat. And any time you isolate and concentrate a substance, it is a drug. Mm -hmm. That's why you call certain chemicals like heroin and and cocaine, once you process it out of the plant, you isolate and concentrate a chemical out of the plant, that makes it a drug. Sure. So we're eating drugs and calling them foods. Okay, I'll give you some more examples of breakfast and you tell me um, how this sounds, if this is any improvement at all. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <laughs> if, if you had a scrambled egg in a, a pan. A dead with, chicken fetus. That's right. But, chicken. Let, let, me, let me tell you okay. what it is. So, so if you had your scrambled egg, dead chicken fetus in a pan mm -hmm. and you had Pam sprayed in there, you had a half grapefruit with no sugar. You had a slice of multigrain toast. And then the drink you may have water distilled or otherwise bottled and green tea. What's right and what's wrong with that for breakfast? Well, it's a good breakfast for someone selling laxatives or toilet paper because uh, other than that, it's just garbage. The problem is the body only deals with one signal at a time. Mm -hmm. You only see out of one eye at a time. The signal gets switched back and forth very fast. You only hear out of one ear at a time. The signals get switched back and forth very fast. So you get the illusion that you're hearing out of both ears or seeing out of both eyes, but that's physiologically impossible. So when you're eating oil, even if the oil is wrapped around a french fry or a pancake, the body says, I'm either going to eat the oil or the starch. And it says, oh, this is oil. So it tries to process this oil. And meanwhile, the starch ferments and rots and putrefies and becomes toxic, irritant, gas, and chemicals in the system. So frying is totally wrong. Okay, so it's doing you no good. Right. So what if you had a boiled egg? You're still eating the fetus, so then that's no good for you either. Oh, wow. what, what do you do for protein then? I mean, I, uh, fish, some seafoods that type of thing, where would a person go for protein if they wanted to have a good breakfast and you said that you knew that the egg is, is among the least You don't food. want to eat protein, let's be clear on that. You want to eat amino acids and let your body build a protein because these little things called amino acids are little bricks that the body makes into a wall that we call protein. Mm -hmm. So you want to eat amino acids. You want to get the amino acids from the same place that the cattle got it in the same place that the fish got it. They got it from eating grains. The cow eats grains and makes protein. Mm -hmm. So you can get your amino acids from the soybeans or from other sources other than the cow. Okay, well give me an example of, of a good, healthy breakfast that could be within anyone's reach if they're willing to make changes. Okay, we, we're talking about someone coming from what we call a junk food diet. Per, perhaps you're talking about someone trying to make a transition to a, a natural diet. Uh, transition to, yeah, let's yeah, try that. A, a good healthy <laughs> diet would be a transition. glass of water in the morning because that's all you really need. Okay, well, that's what I have yeah, in the morning, so, so, like but, 64 but we're ounces talking, before I'm yeah, through. That's but about yeah. it. Okay. So we're talking about someone trying to make a transition from eating the fried foods and drinking eat at the same time, which no animal does because mm -hmm. it dilutes the digestive enzymes to help your body break down the food and get the nutrients from the food. So you shouldn't dilute the strength of these enzymes to get the energy out of your food. So mm -hmm. you don't drink and eat at the same time. You don't combine starch with protein. That doesn't work because the body can either need to be in one state to digest the protein or another state to digest the starch. 
and it can't make the decision, so it makes a decision on one over the other. We call it acid and alkaline states in, in, in science. Okay. So the, you're confusing the whole body with mm -hmm. this whole diet that you just mentioned. But we have to remember that this food is made to be addicting. So there are chemicals in the food that cause the person to crave the food. So we have addicting chemicals in the food, which we call behavior modifiers, which re was released on the Nuremberg trial. So the unconfused dieter would eat what for a healthy breakfast? The unconfused dieter would have to realize they're addicted to the food. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything to the person until they admit that they're so addicted. So they, let's say they realize that. Okay, mm -hmm. then they need to take something called Crave Less or Crave X to get rid of their craving for sugar and salt. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I cannot help them. They need Crave X or Crave Less and take that according to the directions on the label. Those are supplements to mm -hmm. get rid of the craving for sugar and salt. That sure. they're going to need. Okay, so they've done that. Now they've done that. Mm -hmm. Now they're used to this milk and cornflakes, which is illogical because milk doesn't combine with anything in nature. A pig drinks the milk from his mother's titty and doesn't eat cornflakes. Mm -hmm. You know, drink mm -hmm. the milk, suck on the titty, eat some cornflakes. The pig doesn't do that. Even a pig or rat doesn't do that because mm -hmm. milk does not combine with anything in nature. That's clear. So they're used to putting this cornflakes with the milk. So what we're going to do now is get a whole grain corn, which this guy named Kellogg's came out with, mm -hmm. a Battle Creek. And oh, we're getting a whole grain wheat. This Dr. Graham came out and called it graham crackers. This, this natural food thing is not, nothing anything new now. It, in history, it was a Dr. Kellogg's and Dr. Graham introduced these whole grains long ago. So we're going to use a whole grain corn. We're going to call that cornflakes, named after Dr. Kellogg. Okay. And we're going to mix that with a vegetable milk known as almond milk, soy milk, rice milk, oat milk, spelt milk, and we're going to use that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to use instead of the cornflakes and cow's milk. Okay. And then we're all right. Now if they want sausage, we're going to have the texturized soy sausage, which tastes like Those sausage. Are good. Yeah, I eat them. So yeah, we're going to have the, the soy sausage and our corn flakes with the vegetable milk. Now we're all right. We're in a nice transition diet. We can stay there forever. Okay. No problem. <laughs> and that's a start to your day. Uh, that's a start. Okay. But we're not going to do the we're not going to do the citrus. Okay. Citrus is both eaten with citrus and citric alone. We're talking about the grapefruit. Remember? Sure. We're yep. not going to do that because that doesn't combine. You eat citric with citric. That means grapefruit goes with lemon. Lime and oranges. So they all stay in the same family. All the citrus are going right. to be staying there together. They don't combine with anything. Okay. All right. So then you might want to go through the day a little bit. Then it's time for a snack. How about raisins and almonds? Dried raisins, of course. That's, well, that's a raisin. And yeah. then um, natural almonds. We got unsalted. a problem here. We got a problem here. Because when God made this grape, it had water in it. Now you took the water out. And you call it a raisin. Mm -hmm. When you eat the raisin, the body has to put the water back in the raisin, rehydrate as we call it, put the water back in the raisin. Mm -hmm. So the body, you eat the raisin, the body is going to turn it back into a grape before it can metabolize it. Mm -hmm. The body is going to mm -hmm. make it into a grape before it eats it. So it has to pull this water from somewhere. So it takes the water from your veins, your arteries, and your nervous system. That's because a raisin is a concentrated sweetener. Like white sugar is a concentrated sweetener, maple syrup, honey, and all of these concentrated sweeteners cause the body to lose moisture in the nervous system, the veins and arteries, the bones, reproductive system, prostate. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uterus, eyes. Mm -hmm. That's where all of this fluid is coming from. So therefore, you're saying that dried fruits, um, or I'm asking, are dried fruits uh, non-favorable to the diet if, if you choose to, to be healthy? Well, we're talking about a transition diet, right? We're trying to say this person, they're going halfway there, but not all the way there. Right. So we're saying they have to drink more water. Uh -huh. If they're going to eat dried fruit, they have to drink more water. But if they drink a lot of water, they can have their raisins. I'm just, you're asking me to teach them the correct way to do something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to say the correct way to do something wrong, duh, <laughs> <laughs> they would have to drink more water. Uh -huh. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Whether I, I think it's correct or not is another issue. But okay. I mean, uh, all right. Well, okay. Yeah. All right, so then what would be considered a, a snack that would be even more healthy? And, and, and as okay, you said, yeah. we're trying to teach this person the to, correct way to, to do, do something, something wrong. wrong. Oh, right. yes. And we know they're a transition person. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So we're saying that ideally, in your mother's womb, you were fed every four hours because mm -hmm. it takes that long for your stomach to empty. That's when the amniotic fluid is changed. It puts you on the right eating schedule for life. 
But we came out here and we get conditioned by another culture to eat mm -hmm. according to these other rules, which are culturally motivated. So we're saying that ideally, if you eat breakfast at eight o'clock, you should wait four hours for your stomach to empty and then eat lunch. If you eat before then, it keeps breakfast on your stomach. Mm -hmm. So you end up going to bed with all meals still on your stomach, causing what we call constipation, which is white plaque on your teeth and tongue, which is a sign that your body is all backed up with constipation, with manure. So ideally, they should not eat a snack. But if they're going to eat a snack, mm -hmm. we want to say the correct way to do this wrong thing mm -hmm. is to eat a whole grain snack, a whole grain snack of some sort. So maybe some, like you mentioned, some almonds and raisins, papaya, mango, different types of dry fruit with some nuts and seeds. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, moving right along, dinner, and then I'm going to move to another area. But I think it's helpful for people to understand exactly it's, it's more tangible, I think, when you can envision what you might need to put in your body, which explains exactly what you've been saying. Um, for dinner, what if you had broiled salmon with dill and lemon juice, steamed spinach, and then maybe some brown rice? Um, can we do that? Ideally, <laughs> you want to do the vegetables with the meat. Okay. Or you do the vegetables with the starch, but you don't want to do the starch and the meat together. That is, that's not digestion, that's constipation. That's causing waste to accumulate in your system, and eventually you're going to pay for this thing. Mm -hmm. Eventually you're going to pay for it. It's no free ride in nature. Whatever you do wrong, you pay for it immediately. Mm -hmm. You may not be aware of it immediately, but you pay for it immediately. Right. So what happens when you eat this meal that you mentioned, there's brown rice and the greens and the salmon and all that. Well, it's not fried chicken now. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's broiled salmon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, <laughs> it's a fish too stupid enough not to get caught. <laughs> so that tells you how smart you're going to be by eating it. Right? <laughs> so uh, what we're saying here is that this stresses the system. The body says, this is stressing me to deal with this thing. Mm -hmm. And stress can be emotional, it can be social, it can be spiritual, it can be your relationship, it can be your job. And whenever you're under stress, it decreases the blood and nutrients to your reproductive system, to your digestive system, and to your immune system. So we got a problem here. Because if you keep stressing your system, it's going to decrease the blood to your reproductive system. Eventually, your prostate it's going to deteriorate or your mm -hmm. uterus is going to deteriorate because anytime you stress the system, it reduces the blood to the reproductive system and the digestive system, which means you're going to have gastric reflux reaction, you can have diabetes, you're going to have liver problems, all those organs that work with the digestive system. Sure. So stress causes that, no matter where the stress is coming from. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. So okay. you're stressing yourself with the diet and then you're stressing yourself from other things, social, your relationship, some kind of disease you may be having, it puts your body into this mode and the body goes into a defense mode and shuts down the blood to the reproductive, digestive, and immune system. You're going to have some problems eventually. Okay. Let me ask you this. Um, you think about the days that, that most of us grew up, and I think, you know, a lot of us, um, there are more baby boomers living in this generation.